Praise the Lord. Y'all have a good weekend. Amen. <laughs> it's going to be a long service. We bless you tonight, God. We thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you've done. And we thank you for what you're going to do, Lord. Hallelujah. Ha-ha. We thank you that lives are being changed, Lord, from glory to glory, Lord. Thank you that you're touching people's lives across this nation, God. That you're bringing a great awakening, God. You're stirring your church, God, to rise and be that bride that you've called her to be. And we get to be a part of it. We get to be participators, God. We don't have to just sit on the sidelines and watch, but we get to be involved in what's taking place. Hands on. Thank you, Lord. I ask you guys to join together with me. Pray for Pastor George down at Grace Assembly, wherever you're at. He's been sick for two years and still is in a wheelchair and uh, he just he needs a supernatural healing and miraculous healing and so we just lift up Pastor George to you right now in the name of Jesus we come together in agreement God we've already seen many miracles happen here God and we ask you for a great miracle to happen in Parker Arizona raise up Pastor George God he's fought the good fight of faith he's kept on pressing in God and we ask that all infection would be gone out of his body Lord everything that's attacking the organs in his body would be canceled in the name of Jesus. The assignments of hell against him would be canceled in the name of Jesus. And God, that life would come to him. Father, we just pray for revival and awakening across our land. We pray that your pulpits would become flames of fire, God. God, that the pillar of truth would speak again, God. The truth would come, God, regardless of the consequences. They'd speak the word and let it fall where it may. God, touch. There's hungry people across this nation looking for the truth, God. Father, we pray for our president. We cover him and his family right now in the name of Jesus. God, during these last couple of weeks. We pray for those who are going to the election booths, God. We pray there will be no interference along the way, God. We pray there's going to be a wave of righteousness sweep over this land, God. God, people didn't even think had a chance to be voted in, but had right hearts. Will be voted into positions, God, to take a stand for this nation. That it would be one nation under God. God, everything that exalts itself against the name of Jesus would be pulled down. God, we pray that heaven would invade our schools again. God, it would would be taught about our forefathers and about uh, the godliness that they had. And that that it was by the word of God and by what you led men to do, God, that this nation was formed. God, we pray that it would enter into our colleges again, into our government again, Lord. That you would be honored and given glory and praise. We pray that the government here in Denver would have no answer for what the judges have declared. The judges have said the church has the right. And we pray churches will begin to gather again, Lord. Woo. Thank you for those pastors that took a stand. God bless them. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo. I don't know about y'all, but I had a fun weekend. 2,000 miles stuck in an aluminum tube flying over top of the universe. 470 miles in a miniature car. (laughs) 
but at least it was warm. <laughs> uh, the wonderful desert. Uh, I'd have an awesome time and got to spend a, really a full day on the Mojave Reservation. And man, God opened up some leaders there that we got to spend time with. And man, they're praying. They believe God's revival is supposed to start there. And just let it, you know, God, wherever you, I believe it's just going to burst up everywhere. Amen. You're not going to be able to go to a city that they're not going to say, God is in our city. Amen. And that's what we want to hear, no matter what city it is across this nation. When you in a town, did you God is in our city. <laughs> so we talked with the uh, native evangelists. Pastor Alec, and he was talking about uh, in some past years how the Spirit of God would come and he'd be driving and gold dust would just cover the, the front of his car there. The dashboard of his car would just be covered. He didn't even know what it was. He's raking it off like, where's this coming from? And uh, oil would flow out of the walls of his house, and his son repainted, and it still kept on flowing over the paint. <laughs> Woo! So I'm like, oh, Lord, turn it loose again. Uh, so it was good to um, meet together with people and see there are people all over the place. Uh, I don't think there's no area that there's not a remnant of people that are asking God to move in our nation again, and in the world again, that are not upset with what's going on and uh, are praying for God to move and touch people's lives. I want to turn to John chapter 1. Huh. More. <laughs> That was like delayed reaction or something. <laughs> John chapter 1, man, it's powerful. The gospel of John, John writes in his gospel... Uh, in a whole different way than Matthew, Mark, and Luke, in beginning what he has to tell about Jesus. He says, in the beginning was the Word. Yeah. Woo! Ha <laughs> ha, the Logos. And if you turn to Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was out without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And then God said, God spoke. God, the logo, spoke. And the first thing he said, let there be light. And there was light. Light didn't have an argument about whether it would come or not. It came immediately. Light came. It's amazing there. Some of the worship tonight was about light. And so in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. I think John's just reiterating this Jesus who he's about to speak about. He he's not a created being. He's not Satan's brother. He is God. He was there in, in, before everything began, and he'll be there when everything leaves. He was in the beginning with God. And all things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. So he knows about everything. He knows about our DNA. He knows about the molecules in our body. He knows everything that was made then and everything he's given man to make now. Some pretty amazing things that man has been able to accomplish by the help of God. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Man, when that life that, you know, we speak life. He is the way and the life and the truth. We speak life. But there's something that comes in. 
You know, in Genesis, in Genesis, we see that man was corrupted and really lost that glow. They, they lost that spirit that God had on them. And then John's re-itinerating. Here it comes again. The opportunity for the word made flesh to dwell among you. And when he comes, this light comes inside of you. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it says, But even if the gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds, verse 3 and verse 4, the God of this world has blinded, has blinded, so they can't see that light. They can't open up to what God wants to bring to them. Light brings revelation also. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Man, uh, faith, it takes faith to have the light of God begin to shine. The enemy does not want that light to come because it exposes the darkness, it exposes the lies, it exposes the deception. Part of revival is, you know, people have talked about if you really want spiritual warfare, if you really want to disarm the principalities in your area, it's when people get born again and the light comes into them and the deception leaves, it begins to cut away those platforms that have been built by the lies of the enemy. That's why revival brings a transformation in a community because it tears down the principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness because they've lost their puppet strings to those who are living on this earth. Light and revelation comes in and people say, that's not right to do. We shouldn't live like that. We shouldn't act like that. We shouldn't talk like that. We should love our neighbors. We should love one another. We should care for one another. And the peace, righteousness, peace, of God begins to come in. Woo. Light opens that revelation. Who the devils tried to blind and keep away. John chapter 3, it says, Men loved the darkness and they they went from the light because they didn't want their evil deeds to be exposed. Light brings exposure. It opens up what's going on. It turns on the light in our hearts to see the deception that's in our hearts. To see where the enemies lied to us. For we do not preach ourselves but Christ Jesus the Lord. And ourselves your bondservants for Jesus sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of the darkness. Who has alone in our hearts. Who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Wow. Who has shown in our hearts and that light begins to show and it begins to open us up to see who God really is. To see what's really available. If you have darkness, you can't even see what's there. You can't even see right in front of you. Is all this that you can grab a hold of. And when the light starts shining, it starts revealing and opening up. Wow, life is here. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are here. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is here. Man, God wants me to be an heir for what's from heaven. God wants me, he wants to empower me to transform this earth. He wants me to make disciples of all nations. I couldn't see that before. All I could see in front of me was I was trying to figure out how to live my life and trying to figure out why I was on this earth. It's hard to figure out until the light comes and and enlightens us. I have a purpose here. God has a plan for me here. Talk about, somebody was sharing about restoring, I think, Renato restoring relationships say hi went with me and some of y'all might have seen in the las vegas airport he's blowing a shofar yeah. Woo. <laughs> Woo. there's this, some kind of security guy over there and he said have you ever heard a shofar no uh, do you want to hear one i'm not interested <laughs> he blew it and after that the guy was smiling and said that sounded really good <laughs> It's amazing that that sound really didn't, uh, didn't put people into a, you know, they weren't like, whoa, 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 whoa. 
Every, everybody was like, wow, that's, what is that? You know, it just, on the way home, we were in Chili's in the airport, and he blew it in Chili's. For the waitress there, she's like, wow. And people outside, you know, you're in the, in the little restaurant, and the people out there in the foyer were outside in the main big hallways. Someone was turned around and videoing. And so, it, it, I mean, it, 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 it brings a peace in the air. It's, it brings a peace over the airwaves. Hallelujah. And so on the way, once we left the airport, we were in Needles, California, and stopped at a church that I preached at several times. And a sign on there said, closed until further noticed, because it's in California and it's COVID. And so until further notice, we gave it a new notice. He's blowing the shofar there, and we're praying over the land. And then I get a, a, a comment on there from a lady Right across the river on the Mojave Reservation, Sister Lily, who I've known, it's probably been four or five years since I've heard from her, but it, you know, God bringing things back together, and so she says, give me a call, and so I gave her a call, and on the way back around on our trip on Monday afternoon, we stayed at her house, and we had an audience of several native leaders, and uh, spent the night there on, in the reservation, Hallelujah. <clears throat> so you just don't know uh, what God is about to do. That's right. Woo. He is busy. Amen. Amen. And so uh, reunited those relationships, opened doors again, and uh, got to have a lot of prayer. It's God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have tr this treasure in earthen vessels. We have a treasure in earth. And in uh, NLT it says fragile clay jars. We have this earthen, tr uh, earthen treasure. We have this light. In these fragile clay jars. That's what these temples are. Fragile clay jars. But we have this treasure from heaven. We have this light shining in the jars. Woo. Crack them open like Gideon did a little bit. And blow the trumpet in Zion. And watch the enemy flee. Hallelujah. When that light begins to shine in us. We don't have to say a whole lot, man. It, bling, it brings blindness and confusion to the enemy. So we should guard. This is a treasure, this light. It isn't this little light of mine. It's this great big light that's living inside of me. It's our job not to put anything over it that would make it go out. But to keep feeding the fire. Just think when we're praying in the Holy Ghost, I believe we're causing that light. It's going from, you know, it's going from a nine volt battery to a 120 volt. And you keep on praying, it's going to 440 volts. Woo, it's getting pretty bright. We have a treasure in these vessels. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We're just this fragile clay, clay pot, but it's the power of God. It's, it's him and not us. We realize that, that what's taking place is not because <clears throat> of what a wonderful clay pot we have. But it's because of that wonderful light that's inside of that clay jar that's shining. Ooh, lighting us up so we can be dangerous. says, we are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. The enemy may crack our pot, but he's not going to crush our pot. We are perplexed, but not in despair. There's sometimes we wonder, what in the world is going on? But then we say to ourselves, but I'm trusting in God. 
He knows what's going on. He knows what the future holds. I may be in despair and a little bit of confusion here and not sure about things, but I have to trust that God knows what's going on. Persecuted, but not forsaken. I've not left you. Man, so many times Paul was persecuted. At times he said, everybody left me, but the Lord stood with me. He'll not leave us nor forsake us. So no matter what's going on, he's there with us. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested. Then it says in verse 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Oh, yeah. Woo. That light affliction is bringing a greater weight of glory. A greater weight. I don't think there's any time that the... That that affliction or persecution doesn't come. That after it or during it or sometime, God doesn't bring a heavier, weightier uh, weight of glory upon us. Yeah. You know, that's, that's what gives people weight in their words. Yeah. Man, you, you talk to the saints of old that have been through some stuff. And they don't have to say a whole lot of words because there's a lot of weight on what they're saying. Because they've went through that fire and come out the other side. Many of you have went through the fire and come out the other side. There's a greater weight coming on your words. You know, it's, it's one thing to talk about how to do things. We can all have our opinions on how to do things. But when you went through it and actually done it. In foster care, we used to have to go to conferences and listen to psychiatrists and uh, psychologists and master's degrees in counseling and child care. And they all had their opinions on things. What I wanted to ask them is, how many children have you had in your home? Amen. Well, I've never had one. Well, shut up. <laughs> I don't care what kind of counseling degree you got. <laughs> Until you've lived with young people that have been through a lot of struggles night and day, you really don't have a clue. That's right. You may show up in the daytime and counsel them for an hour. Oh, well, yeah. what about in the midnight hour? What about when they're lighting fires in your house? What about when other gangs are coming and beating on your doors and trying to get that person out of your house? Yeah, talk to me about your counseling. I thank God all the times we had one person that said, we've had nine children we've raised in our house. I said, I'm listening to you. What do you got to say? They had a weight of glory on them for what they had been through. So when you're going through something, realize... I'm, you know, go ahead and start fitting your jacket because God's putting a heavier weight of glory on you. There's going to be power in your words when you begin to speak. Those that have been through a death of a close person in their family, there's a weight of glory coming on you. Those that have went through bankruptcy, there's a greater weight of glory coming on you when you come out the other side. Those that have went through divorce, there's a greater weight of glory coming to help you help others on the other side. Those who have been in the hospital and been through sickness. There's a greater weight of glory coming. Those who have been on the mission field. Went through persecution or persecution on your job or persecution in your community. There's a greater weight of glory. Everything we stand for. Ooh, God, God knows. He takes account. Of every little thing. Woo. Why we do not look at the things which are seen. But the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Woo. It's amazing to think that the things that are unseen. Are eternal. And more. And they'll be there. They're more powerful. Things that we see are temporary. Things that a lot of times we live our life for are temporary. It's like the guy, the wealthy man who is passing away. <clears throat> and he wanted to talk to, he talked to the Lord. The Lord came to visit him. 
He said, this one thing I want. Can I take this gold with me? So the Lord finally agreed he could take two suitcases of gold. So he died and went to heaven, and there was St. Peter at the gate. He said, what do you got with you? He said, I got my suitcase with my stuff in it. The Lord told me I could bring this. No, you can't bring nothing in here. Everything has to stay on earth. And he had an argument with St. Peter, and finally he said, well, what do you got in those suitcases? And he opened them up. He was so happy. Look at this gold. And St. Peter's like, oh, you got some uh, blacktop. <laughs> Pavement. Man, just think of heaven is paved with gold. What does everything else look like? I just wish they'd do some road work and send some more of those flakes down. (laughs) Come on, angels. Go ahead and do some grading on on the pavement up there and knock a little bit of that stuff off down here on earth. So the light shines in darkness and the darkness does not comprehend it. Back in John chapter 1 verse 5. A man then the Lord chooses. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. What a powerful statement. A man sent from God. It doesn't really it doesn't say called by God. It says sent by God. A man who was, we, we've talked about John the Baptist. I just, I love John the Baptist. You know, baptized in the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb. Woo. And now he's sent from God for a job. To reveal who Jesus is. A man, there was a man sent from God. Oh Lord, we're in need of some men and women sent from God in this hour. Yeah. We're some, in need of some men and women who do not fear death, hell, or the grave, the devil, any of his minions, any government, any politics, any religion. God, they're sent from God. John did not have fear. I mean, he's standing before the king and said, you're married to your brother's wife, and you don't. And that's wrong. So he didn't fear the king. He didn't fear the government. When religion showed up, he said, you brood of vipers. There was something. There was a greater weight that was pushing him forward than the weight that was pushing him backwards. I mean, I don't, I don't know how much control of it he had or not. It's like, when that fire gets on you, I, I mean, you your mind kind of goes somewhere else until later. And your mind comes back and says, what in the world was I saying? That's going to cause me a lot of trouble. Maybe after you do it long enough, you stop worrying about what you just said. After you've done it long enough, you start, that was good. (laughs) Keep on speaking. He didn't have, I mean, his father was a priest, but he wasn't going by his credentials. He wasn't going by what house he lived in. He wasn't going by what block he lived in. He was going because he was a man sent from God. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light. That all through him might believe. He was not that light, but but was sent to bear witness of that light. And that light, that was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. Every man has opportunity for the light to come in them. Verse 19, it says, this was the testimony of John, that when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. 
You didn't have no trouble with that at all. I'm not him. Don't worship me. Well, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I'm not. Are you the prophet? And he said, no. And they said to him, who are you? That we may give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say? He must not have came with his prophet card when he got there. He said, I am the voice. I am the voice. I'm not anything else, but I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. He was almost like, let's see. Ezekiel or Jeremiah. Don't be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. I put in your, behold, in verse 9, chapter 1, verse 9, behold, I put my words in your mouth. I'm putting them, I'm putting that logos. The words, the logos, the word made flesh and dwelt among us. I'm putting that living word in your mouth. It's about to come out. It had to be the living word, had to be the logos to be there. See, this day I have set you over nations and over kingdoms to root out and pull down, to destroy and throw down, to build and to plant. Guess what? He never had a wrecking ball. He didn't have, he didn't have a bulldozer. He had the logos, the word of God that destroyed the principalities and powers that would pull down nations and kingdoms, root out the evil inside of them. And then he had the logos word to rebuild what was there with the proper foundation. Woo. Man, when the word of God is spoken by the prophet, the man or woman of God, there's power in the word of God. Woo. There's more power in that than the power of armies, man. When God spoke the word, he created the heavens and the earth. How much power is there in that Logos word going out? And John's speaking. He's saying, make straight the way of the Lord. You better get things right. I'm going to tell you how to do it, you brood of vipers. I mean, that had to be a strike in the face to show up. You just put on your latest robes. You got all your phylacteries and all your bells and whistles. You rode out in your new chariot. You're expecting to get a front row seat, a chair on the platform. And this wild man calls you a brood of vipers, a bunch of snakes. Now, see, somebody else could have said that, and it just got them in more trouble. But when he said that, there was power. I mean, I believe conviction hit their hearts, and they knew exactly what he was saying. They had compromised the word of God. They had compromised the glory of the Lord wasn't in the temple. They were going through their religious acts. And man, that hit them like a ton of bricks. Nobody had been willing to stand up and say, you brood of vipers. What you're doing to God's people. You represent heaven. Now those who were sent were from the Pharisees. And they asked him, why then do you baptize if you're not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor a prophet? John answered, I baptize with water, but there stands one among you who you do not know. The sad part, after three and a half years, you still won't know who he is. After all the miracles, signs and wonders, wisdom that he speaks, you still won't know. And you're the ones that should know who is talking to you. 
It is he who coming after me is preferred before me, whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to loose. These things were done in uh, Bethabara, beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Well, he didn't miss it or get it mixed up. This is he of whom I said, after me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing with water. Man, just think, baptizing with water. The father told him, go and start baptizing. In the midst of your baptizing, I'm going to reveal who the Lamb of God is. Not even during your preaching, not even during your prayer time, but as you're baptizing. Man, it may be when we're in worship that he reveals, that I mean, revelation opens up and we see who he is. It may be in our quiet time in prayer that God reveals and opens up. Who knows what we're doing? Some people say, I don't know what to do. Well, the Bible gives us a few things we can go ahead and begin to do. As we do it, I found most of the time that God really speaks to me is when I'm, I'm doing something. I'm doing what I know to do. And when God is, I mean, he's like, that's good. You've been faithful in that. And all of a sudden, heaven shows up and said, now, this is where, this is where I'm leading you. I was riding a bicycle across the United States praying for America. When I got led into the bottom of the Grand Canyon to visit with the Havasupai. Who, when we went out that area this past weekend, the reservation, the Wallapai reservation was completely, every road into where the village is was blocked off with guards because of COVID. They've not really been able to come in or go out besides get groceries. Then they told me the road to Supai was completely blocked off and nobody flies in and out or hikes in and out. Wow. But I was led into Supai while I was out praying for America. And then a couple months later when I was at a winter conference, Karen Wheaton's winter camp. Then God, I mean, I'm just having a good time and got my kids there. And then God speaks in the middle of that. This is what I want you to do. Go live in the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Wrong conference. It's amazing God can speak to you. With this, I mean, their stage, their platform is at least twice, maybe three times. There's four sets of drums. Wow. There's two sets, full sets of drums, and then there's congos and others. Bomb, ba da, bomb, 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 bomb. I don't know how many guitars, keyboards, and everything else. I think half the kids in school play an instrument. And in the middle of that, it can be dead quiet. And God can speak to you. Wow. John bore witness saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove. And it remained upon him. Just think, he actually saw. We, we think about a dove. You know, the pictures of the dove coming. But he said, I saw the spirit in the manner it looked like how it would look if a dove flew down and landed on his shoulder. But it was the spirit. He saw the God opened our eyes. We'll begin to see the spirit falling on people. I think I've only seen something like that one time with a couple in our church that had been in our church for probably a year and. I'd preach my little heart out, and every time at the altar call, especially her husband, they'd leave. But then revival came. Woo. We were in a different building, and we're preaching the word of God. And I saw it look like from heaven, looked like fire fell. I seen right on his seat. Bam. And when it did, he fell out on the floor. I'm like, woo. 
You're not leaving at the altar call this time. Then we, they drug him up to the front, and he got Jesus. He had no complaints. He had no, he had no arguments, no theological debates. He was ready. Do you want to get born? Yes, I don't. He got saved. Then we said, do you want the Holy Ghost? Yes, yes, yes. It was not hard to convince him at all. Lord, so I saw heaven come down in the form of liquid fire. <laughs> it wasn't a gentle touch of a dove. John saw it looked like it looked like a dove came out of heaven. The spirit glided down and landed on him. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me. I love what a clear, I mean, I just think about what clear conversation the men of God, the men of old had with God. He spoke to me, and this is what he said. He who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. So we know that from beginning that Jesus came to bring light to the world and light into men's heart. But, I mean, the primary thing John said that Jesus would do is he would baptize people with the Holy Spirit. This is the one who's going to baptize people in the Holy Spirit. I mean, that was the calling card of Jesus. That, if he had a card made up, it's a baptizer in the Holy Spirit. Because he knows if he can touch us, He's fully God and fully man. But there were no miracles until the day of this baptism. When the Holy Spirit fell on him, he said, I'm going to have to show you guys how to do this. God's going to bad the Father's going to baptize me in the Spirit. And from now on, I'm going to baptize you in the Spirit. And when you get baptized in this same Spirit that I've received, you're going to do the same things and greater things than I've done. Woo. Lord, let us have that same. We preach about the Holy Spirit a lot, but if you read this book, he tends to be in here a lot. <laughs> there must be something about it. I mean, times when the disciples faced great persecution, stepped out of town, dusted their feet off, they were filled with the Holy Spirit in great joy. The building shook. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. We're having a revival. We're talking about weekly being filled with the Holy Spirit. God, fill us again. Fill us again. En enlarge our capacity to hold more. I don't know exactly how that works. If it's a one drop will do it or you need a few pounds or what it is. God, if you can fill the whole arms and legs and just the brain, the mind, the heart. God, how full can we get? I think we could get full enough to where it begins to overflow out of us, God. That's how full. You said it would be like rivers running out of our innermost being. Out of our belly would flow rivers of living water, God. We want to see. God, we want what this book talks about. We want what the logos talks about. We want the power of the word of God to operate inside of us, God. Without measure, without limitations, Lord. God, we come here and we ask you to cleanse us and wash us, purify us, refine us, transform us. Ephesians 5 says, imitate God, therefore, brothers. God, transform us to where we're imitating you, Lord God. Ooh, until we're full of what you were full of, heaven. Baptized in fire. Shatara bakarama satara. 
Matthew 3, 16 says, When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descend like a, a dove and lighting on him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. It wasn't long before he was joining John in rebuking the Pharisees. Man, after 400 years, they couldn't catch a break. I bet they're wondering, who are these? There's one madman in the wilderness telling us we're a brood of vipers. When he saw the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said, brood of vipers. Who warned you to flee the wrath to come? Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. Lord, seems like the religious spirit has done everything he could to keep the body of Christ dry. Woo! You know, it's been a dry season in Colorado. It's been a dry season in Arizona, California, Nevada. In fact, the hottest temperature recorded, recorded in the world that actually can be, you know, all the experts says, yes, this is the real temperature. 130 degrees in Death Valley just recently, I believe July. And they said that's the hottest temperature accurately recorded in the world I, I hear of places overseas where they say it gets hotter you know, out in the Sahara Desert or somewhere but they don't have an actual accurate recording of it but a dry land and it seems like the church has had dry spells but God we believe there's living water there's rivers. About to come out over the land like we've never seen before. We're still seeing things being shaken. Praise God. I mean, who knows in the next two weeks... Will there be anything left in the darkness? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Heaven's singing, this little light of ours. But they're singing, this big light of ours. We're letting it shine. In Washington, California. What? Seattle, Oregon, Chicago, Michigan. We're going to let it shine. Right. So that encourages us to pray even more and let the river flow out of us even more. Man, we don't know what destruction this river is doing, but we know that water can cause destruction when it really begins to run. I mean, it can wipe out everything in its path. It's dangerous. It's amazing flying over the Grand Canyon and uh, just... The mountains after that, you can see where it looks like water. You can see anywhere water ran, just washed everything away. God, let the water run inside of us. God, I pray that you, <clears throat> that you would turn us on supercharge. And rivers that begin to flow out of us like they've never flowed before. They would run down, man. And I believe that water is lit up. There's times in the ocean where boats go and the, the water begins to glow behind it. I don't know. Algae or something causes that to begin to happen. Lord, I, <clears throat> it'd be awesome. If, you know, if you could see the Spirit come down like a dove, it'd be awesome one day, God, if you just expose when we're praying, we begin to see rivers just come out of us and begin to. I mean, how much more would you pray? You'd walk into a store and say, I 
mean, it'd be hard to get you to say anything but speaking in tongues. We stand around each other. That's the cool thing. If, has anybody ever been to the Grand Canyon National Park? How many people did you hear speaking English? I mean, you hear every language in the world there. It's, it's about every tenth one speaking English. So it's a great place to walk around and go. <laughs> You're from another planet. Uh, citizenship is in another place, heaven. I've never had anybody really look at me like, what is he saying? You know, because they just went, it's great when you're in nations with, that speak other languages. What a great time. Especially when you sit down to eat. Whole table just be speaking to each other. Shut <laughs> You done poured water over the whole restaurant. And they still ain't figured out nothing's going on yet. Ooh, come on, heaven. Come on, those that are in house fires and around the land. God, let there be a tsunami of the Holy Ghost. God, we <clears throat> it would be awesome to see. Uh, our president, president be inaugurated and see the Holy Spirit like a dove. It'd be really awesome if it hit him right there and he, he's standing there, you know, making that pledge over the Bible. And then all the Orthodox Jews saying, he's telling us that Jesus is the Christ and he's speaking to us in Hebrew. <laughs> All, all Israel gets born again. Woo. Woo. Come on, if you don't say it, you won't have it. So, Lord, we're saying it, God. Breathe on our White House, God. Breathe on our Pentagon. Bring on a, breathe on our Senate and our Congress, Lord God. Breathe on our state capital and the governor here. Breathe. Begin to breathe on these government officials, God. That the Holy Spirit will begin to settle on them, Lord. <clears throat> they would find out who they are. They are men sent from God. Not sent here on their own. Well, when you know you're sent from God, you have a mandate to accomplish something. Sharabakatarabashata. I believe we'll, be, we'll see a time because one of the one of the signs of revival is sending. And I know we have some groups that have went out in prayer and intercession, but I believe we're going to see people really sent with a mission and a purpose. They may be sent overseas. <clears throat> they may be sent across the nation, across the state, or across the city. There's, there's nothing like when God, I mean, it's like God, hard to, hard to describe. <clears throat> I knew when I was sent to ride a bicycle, I knew when I was sent to go into Supai. It's like something locks onto you. God's GPS gets on you to make sure you're going the right direction. God, I thank you for those that are coming and praying at different hours of the day and the night, God, <clears throat> that are praying for our nation, praying for what's going on. Those intercessors, God, I pray that they'll meet with heaven in this place like they've never met before. 
God, I pray when they walk in that building, that spirit of intercession, that groaning, travailing out of our belly, God, travailing and groaning that we don't even understand will begin to break out over us, God, because there's a breaking going on in our nation, God. There's a breaking of the spiritual strongholds going on in our nation, God. I pray people will come in here and they won't be able to leave at times. God, thank you for the worship that goes on. Thank you for the praise that goes on. Thank you for the prayers that go on, God. That things are happening, that the angelic movement is increasing, God. That they're coming and going, ascending and descending, Lord. The host of heaven are on the move, God. That there's an electricity in the air. The light of God is beginning to shine. God, light this place up like a Roman candle on top of the mountain. I pray people in the city begin to say, I'm seeing stuff falling out of the sky. And it's coming down over the top of Lookout Mountain. What's going on? What did Jesus tell Nathaniel? Verse in John 1 50, Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said, Most assuredly, I say to you hereafter, you shall see heaven open. And the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. That uh, Jesus is the opening. Jesus is the ladder. And I believe that Heaven still ascending and descending. Jesus is the connection that plugs us to heaven. Woo. God, I pray people's eyes. God, in the spirit realm. You said those things that are unseen are more real than those things that are seen. God, those angelic beings are more real than the things we see. God, we open eyes to begin to see, God, the angelic activity that's taking place, Lord. If you could open the eyes of Gehazi when Elisha was surrounded and he couldn't see that there were more that for him that were for him than those that were against him. And Elisha prayed, God, open his eyes that he can see. So, God, we pray tonight, open eyes that we can see, God. Open eyes, take us behind the veil between this rim of the natural rim and the spiritual rim. Take us through that veil, Lord God, that we can see what's going on. God, that greater, more visions, more dreams, God, will begin to manifest over people. God, I come against anything that's blocking that spiritual activity from taking place. Stir up the Holy Ghost, stir up the rivers inside of us. Ah, if, you, if you hadn't prayed in the spirit in a little while, put your hands on your stomach. Let the river of God begin to flow out of you. God, we're causing a tidal wave to be built up on this mountain, God. The dams of the enemy are going to break, and that wave is going to flow over the city, God. Stir up the Holy Ghost. Stir up the gifts of God. Stir up faith inside of us, God. Let that light begin to burn inside of us, God. Let it grow brighter and brighter. Let 
Shegadarendo Koriata, Randa Rabosata, Shekatarando Roboshata. Ha ha ha! Ha! Sara Karyando Robo Shata! Barrianda Rabo Kota Rabo Shata! I feel like something's lifting off! Ha ha ha! Rabo Karyando Robo Shata! Ha Rabo Koryanda Rabo Shata Rabo! Sekata Rabo Koryata Rabo Shata! Sariando Rabo Shata Rabo Karyanda Rabo Shata! La ba 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 rendo ro ro bo so koria ta ra ba sha ta landa ra bo koria ndo ro ba sha ta ra ba sha ta ha confusion in the enemy's camp confusion in the enemy's camp ha ta ra ba koria ndo ro ba sha ta ra ba 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 sanda ra ba koria ta ra ba sha ta so ko ta ra ba sha ta she ka da ra mo sha ta ra I pray the fire of heavens getting on those devils God burning them God. Blind them, gag them, Lord. They're losing their grip. They're losing their grip. Release the host of heaven, Lord. Release the host of heaven right over this mountain, God. Right over this church, God. Let the heavens be open. Woo! Hey, sararara ba 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 Korean da da ba, shekarana da 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 ba sotara ba ba ba, ra ba 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 shatara ba ba ba. Father, we pray for those that are watching on media. God, we pray for healing in their bodies. God, we pray for encouragement. You may be in an area that is spiritually dark. But God can't, the enemy can't put out the light that God's put inside of you. You may feel like a fragile clay jar. There may have been persecutions and trials and tribulations, and, but there's a greater glory. Woo. Greater glory, Lord. Greater glory, God. Thank you, God, that righteousness, peace, and joy, the kingdom of God, is coming into houses, God. Father, we speak peace over houses where the enemies tried to kill, steal, and destroy. God, we rebuke him and we command him to go. God, we cancel his assignment against people's houses and families in the name of Jesus. God, we curse the spirit of alcohol and addictions in the name of Jesus. Let heaven come in. Heaven, come in your house. Invite heaven in if you're at home. Invite him. Just say, heaven, I invite you. Jesus, I invite you into my house right now. Satar, I invite you into my car right now. I invite you into my heart right now. Come on, heaven. Move and have your being. Shatarabo Kuraba Kariatara Bababa Sekatarabo Shata. Father, we curse divorce. God, if there's any separation, division between a husband and wife right now, we curse that thing in the name of Jesus. You spirit division, go right now in the name of Jesus. Hatarabo Kariatara Bashata Sokotaraba Shatarababa. Let peace reign in the family. God, we call back those prodigals in the name of Jesus. God, let them come. Let them call. Let them call. Let them knock on the door. Let them say, forgive me. I have messed up. I've sinned against you and I've sinned against God. 
I want to start over again. God, anybody that's dealing with cancer right now. Father, in fact, we pray for Rush Limbaugh. We pray for Rush Limbaugh right now, God. The doctors have said there's no hope. Stage four cancer. God, he has really turned his life over to Christ. He's praying. He's seeking the Lord. God, there's multitudes praying for him. God, he's, he's been a soldier in this war for our nation. God, we lift him up to you and we rebuke the spirit of death, God, that he would live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Shata, we agree together, God. You said if any two or three would agree on together, together. Touch in heaven, God, that you'd perform it on this earth. God, we pray for him right now. We rebuke that cancer. We curse it at the roots. We command it to loose his body right now. You have no right. You have to go in the name of Jesus. Loose him and let him go right now. God, we thank you for this church grounds god that we pray god as people come in the driveway god that there'll be nobody in this church die from any sickness or disease god it'll only be a natural death when it's time to go god nobody will die from sickness or disease in the name of jesus god nobody will have to live with anxiety depression him who the Lord has set free is free indeed no suicides God there'll be no suicide God every thought of suicide if there's any watching tonight that that thought of suicide has gone through their head we rebuke that thing in the name of Jesus God anybody in this house tonight those thoughts have, have, have come after them night after night. Father, we break the power of those words of the enemy. We release the, we release the logos of heaven that he had come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Pray right now, God, if anybody has pain in their joints, in their back, Lord God, arthritis. Now we pray for that pain to dissipate right now. Go. Inflammation, go right now. Right now. Right now. All that pain, go. Go from Ken right now in the name of Jesus. Right now. Yeah, put your hands on him. Right now, you got to go. You got to go in the name of Jesus. You don't have to live in that in the name of Jesus right now. Come on. Woo. Arthritis, turn loose. Turn loose. Body and body with congestive heart failure, Ooh, with high cholesterol, high blood pressure, Ooh, irregular heartbeats, out of rhythm. Ah, we pray, God, that heart would come into perfect peace. God, the cholesterol would be balanced right now in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, do a mighty work in their heart. Do a work, God, in the chambers and the valves and every part of the heart, God. God, in that rhythm, God, in the electronic uh, sparks that come through to make the heart operate, God, do a mighty work right now. We come against heart attacks in the name of Jesus. We come against strokes. The pastor back home had a stroke last a few days ago. Father, we pray for him right now. In the name of Jesus, 
God, there'll be no damage from that stroke. Pray for another one, Billy Meeks Jr., another pastor who's been in the hospital and they're not sure what all's wrong, God. We pray for healing in his body. If anybody in here right now has something, some type of sickness or affliction, uh, they want prayer for tonight, I want you to come.